Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a quick video to show you today. This is actually my second recording of this video because I had originally done it and forgot to put this flashlight holder on there. So uh, I also posted this to Instagram yesterday, just a short, like a 20 second video, giving you some close ups and showing the knife off a little bit. And in that, I was lacking the flashlight holder as well. So now that I have it all assembled and complete, I figured I'd re-record and post the correct video to YouTube. So um, guys, this is a sheath I just built for a SOG Kiku, and this is the fixed blade. They do make a folder version. I actually only recently learned about it. I uh, did a couple uh, SOG folders. One was a CLXR or CLXL, I think, and Kiku XR, I want to say. Uh, something like that. Somebody who's a big SOG fan, comment down below and let me know. Correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, so anyway, this is going to a gentleman named Shane. He is a pilot helicopter pilot for the u.s army so right on brother um here is the sheath he asked if i could set this up for a right-handed scout carry so that's the configuration you see it in now if it's on his back if you're looking at him from behind this is the way that's going to go with the handle off to this side so he's going to reach behind and grab the handle with his right hand and draw out to the side that is what a scout carry is um he asked me to attach his Exotac fire rod, his Santo clipper, and his Olight S1 baton, uh, I think this is the baton one, um, flashlight. He also wanted the tech lock to be able to swivel a little bit, and he wanted the whole thing to be ambidextrous. So that took a couple tries uh, for me as well. So typically I get everything first try nowadays after a few years of experience, uh, but occasionally I'll have a project come along that's just enough off the beaten path that when I when I attempt it, I think I've got the right idea in mind, but then it just kind of something, something goes awry for me. In this one, it was just the symmetry, getting a plate that could switch to left or right hand uh, and having every other piece on this be uh, compatible with the opposite side of the sheath as well. So the only two pieces on here that I did not make twice, as you can see, there is this rotating tech lock plate as well as the Sunto clipper plate, but the Exotac fire rod holder, and the Olight baton, uh, S1 baton, S1R, I think it's called. Um, these two holders are already symmetrical, so they can just go to the same spot that they're in, only on the opposite side of the sheath if you decide to switch your setups. Um, so in case you guys aren't already aware, if you're asking for a right-handed scout carry sheath, effectively every other position for that sheath on the same side of the, you know, for the carry clip is going to be a left-handed sheath. And vice versa, if it's a left-handed scout carry, you'd be looking at a right-handed sheet. So that's the reason he's asked if I could make this ambidextrous so that he might be able to switch, say, from right-hand scout to right-hand vertical. So as you're looking at his back here, this is where the sheath goes. You reach behind right-handed draw. But now if he wants to carry it vertically on his right side, at least for a forward grip, that would then have to require that the, the tech lock be moved to this side of the sheath. So you can see how the, the two you know, strong side carries are kind of juxtaposed uh, with which side the tech lock goes on. As far as how this works, the tech lock is on there. It's it's cinched down really tight with some rubber bushings in between itself and the sheath. However, just like you can see on this plate, the bottom hole for the saw, for the hardware is actually a slot that I've cut and allows you to rotate the tech lock. It takes a little bit of force to do it. Obviously, it's a good thing because you don't want it to just rotate on you by accident, but you can muscle it into any direction and you can actually increase the resistance from where it's at by just tightening the hardware down uh, even more. So you do have that option. Um, the plate is also set up to work with Molly locks. He'd said he might want to carry it on Molly at some point. So if you want to, this, this plate is just a mirror image of the one that's currently on the sheath, but you can go through these two holes here, the upper two of the five on the bottom, and then the farthest two outliers up here in the corners. That's an inch and a half square. So um, basically an inch and a half will fit any molly lock and it also works with the tech lock. So you can carry this tech lock vertical, horizontal, any of the canted options in between uh, or molly locks, horizontal or vertical as well. So this is a really versatile setup. The other thing you've got available to you is if you wanted to really pare this down and just rock the knife, you could take everything off of the sheath and just mount the tech lock directly to the sheath and you'd have several angle options to play with there as well. 
Um, if you're looking at this uh, ferro rod holder, this is super simple. This is just a standard ferro rod holder. Nothing really to show there. Um, the shock cord was already on there from uh, when he sent it to me, so I just left it how he had it. Usually I tie it a little different, but this will obviously do the trick. Um, Sunto clipper. This is how I do mine now. I build a little plate. The plate is kind of hovering over the sheath. I've got a little bit of rubber uh, rubber hardware, bleh, hardware, rubber hardware and spacers inside there um, to make sure that the plate doesn't fully touch the sheath, which leaves just enough room for this little clipper to slip behind. And that hole there, you see right here, the tooth on the compass is going to seat into it. You'll hear it click. And that's when you know it's secure. You can definitely feel a difference when it's secure versus when it can move around. It's in there pretty good. And then lastly, we have this flashlight holder. Um, you just kind of pop it up and it becomes really loose, really easy to, to draw. You can seat this down as far as you want. Um, I would really recommend that you push it down until the lens is basically flush with the top of the holder. It's designed that way so that you have a little bit of a squeeze, a friction hold there, and it's not just going to fall out on you. So you have to manually release that pressure to be able to draw your flashlight. Just a little security feature. Um, that's pretty much all I have to show you. I also wanted to really quickly mention um, that this is a really challenging knife to sheath. I Luckily, I got this. I got the retention on this perfect the first try, but it did require some really creative blocking and... For those of you who aren't already aware of what blocking is, it's where you basically stick, you know, pieces of wood or clay or metal or whatever you've got. Um, you shape them and then you stick it to the knife before you press the sheath around it so that it forms into the areas that you want it to and not into any areas that you don't want it to. Um, the blocking for this one was really complex compared to a normal, a normal setup where basically because of the lack of contour on the handle this way, but the giant palm swell this way, I was sort of forced to just cut a piece of wood to fit the shape of the bottom of the handle and then sand down some pieces of craft wood to help to spread the sheath open wide enough at the, at the mouth that this swell would fit in, but also far enough from the front of it where there'd still be some good retention against the handle scales directly. And as you can see, it definitely worked out nicely. Got a good click in, no rattle, no play. Ballistic draw. I'm really happy with how this came out. And um, just a real quick props to SOG for their fact. I think this is a factory sheath for this knife. Um, the ferro rod loop that he made out of nylon and the combat loop, I don't believe, come with it. But the sheath itself, the Kydex work, um, is actually pretty good. It's got a really nice click in. Uh, there's just a little bit of play, not bad, and a really smooth draw. So as far as factory sheets go, I'd say this is honestly one of the better ones I've ever come across. But All right, guys, that is all I've got for you. Let me know what you think. Uh, black multicam with a little bit of purple nylon finish washers for an accent. Um, tell me what you guys think of this whole setup, what you think of having a compact survival setup with all these pieces of kit on it, uh, a rotating tech lock, not rotating, but pivoting, we'll call it because it doesn't spin all the way around pivoting tech lock. And then typically every piece would just be ambidextrous and that'd be good enough, but I was unable to find a way to do that. So I just decided to make the, uh, opposing side plates so that he'd be able to reconfigure it for full ambidexterity. So, all right, guys. Opinions down below in the comment section. If you like this sheath, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like the channel, subscribe. Uh, get some conversations going below. Share this with all your friends. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope I'll see you in the next one. God bless.